I'm here, uh, Kevin Ham, with Ham's Arbor Care, and injecting a very old elm tree. It's 55 plus inches in diameter. Uh, it's in front of the Indian Agency House here in Portage, Wisconsin. So it's kind of a historical tree. There's some pretty early pictures with this tree uh, in front of this house. And so we treat this every three years uh, for Dutch elm disease, if preventative. And uh, we're going to be demonstrating today just how this process All is right. done. All right, so we kind of look at where we drilled it before. We've been treating this for a number of years. We started below grade, <laughs> and now we're, we're working our way up. But you want to be careful not to inject too closely to an old hole. As you can get some leaking going on there. I'm gonna put one over here. And now it's a matter of going around and checking for leaks. And I've got it hooked up to auxiliary water, not my, my water that I need to use. It's a lot of drilling for only one leak. So we've been plugged in for 15, 20 minutes now, so we're down a number of gallons, uh, but we're probably going to be here for a few hours getting this completely injected. All right, we're here for a little less than an hour, and we're about halfway through our first bucket, so it seems to be going well. There are no leaks. This was the area in which we had two leaks that we ended up fixing. You can see it's all kind of dried up and working fine. So we've got a great day here. Uh, the significant factors that need to be in place for a large injection like this is we need good soil moisture and we've had rain quite a bit this last week and we need high pressure low relative humidity in the air and as you can see hardly a cloud in the sky and lots of sunshine is another factor that is good to have in play and so this tree is drinking up our solution relatively quickly. And that's good news. Some interesting features on this tree. You can see the remaining seed fine branches up there. Almost looks like something's wrong with the tree. But elms are a very prolific seed producer and every year they drop thousands of seeds. It's one of the reasons why American elms still exist today. They propagate themselves very effectively. Officially this is a 66 56, excuse me, 56 inch diameter tree. So it's grown just a little bit. I think I quoted it as a 55 inch. It's now 56 inch. Here's an example of the seeds on the wooden walkway. So the transfer has been made. Just over 30 gallons have been injected into this massive tree. Heading towards about 67 gallons. 
All right, we're here with Adam Novi. He's uh, the current caretaker and host here at the Indian Agency House. And uh, Adam, why don't you give me a little bit of background on you? You've got a little history background to you, don't you? Yeah, I have my degree in history from Liberty University in Virginia and been here as director for a couple years now. Been here in other capacities for about four years. Okay, great. And I, I think that's a master's degree that he ultimately got there. He's not very old, so that's a pretty significant accomplishment. And, it's great to have you here and you know a couple questions about the agency house here when was it when was it built well, the agency house was built in 1832 it was uh, basically the the contact point between the federal government and the ho-chunk nation uh, so this was a, during the time era of the forced removal of the native peoples from wisconsin across the mississippi river so uh, this house was built at a pretty significant period in our history wow and and who was the first agent that was stationed here well, the first agent here was John Kinsey. Uh, I had wife Juliet, who makes our story a lot more interesting because she uh, kept notes about what happened here. And those notes okay. eventually uh, became a memoir called Wapan, uh, meaning the early day uh, in the Northwest. So uh, I have a new edition that came out this year, but she talks about you know the firsthand stories that happened here. And uh, that adds a lot of life to a story that you know, normally you just read about in the history books. Sure, yeah, that's neat. And then what was the significance of the house being built here in this location? Well, the agency house is actually overlooking uh, a river valley. Uh, across the river valley was Fort Winnebago, but that river in between was uh, the Fox River. And the Fox River flows north to Green Bay, the Wisconsin River, which is just a mile and a quarter that way, flows down into uh, Mississippi and on, on the Gulf of Mexico. So. This is the one, uh, one stretch of land uh, between the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence Seaway and the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so this became a very strategic point uh, to be able to access you know, vast, vast areas of the Midwest. Okay, cool. When water navigation was when Water navigation important. Was, was important. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, we have a canal right out in front of us here that was built between the two rivers in, uh, in between 1837 and 1870s and uh, you know, that was when when water navigation was important sure uh, by the time it got finished technology advances and we had the railroad come through yeah and I think they're restoring the yes. canal to at least a touristic uh, yep. type attraction so they've right? got the first section done a couple years ago and now they're working on the second the middle section of the canal so we need to see this historic waterway uh, yeah put back together. and it used to be you could look out right from this tree and see yeah this was essentially fox a prairie valley. landscape so yeah. you would have seen uh seen the fox from where we're standing right now awesome well thanks adam for giving us that background and uh you can come out here to portage wisconsin and and see some of the sites so